Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I wanted to show you some Newton's law of cooling problems and solutions. Um, I've made a few videos about this actually over the last couple weeks, but wanted to show you another one here. This is actually one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. If you haven't already checked that out, it is available for instant download and you can go grab it today. Just click that link down in the description or the pinned comment below to go learn more about that. And guys, if you want better grades in calculus, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon down below so you can join the Jake's Math Lessons community. Keep coming back every week. I'll keep helping you get better, better and better grades in calculus. So without further ado, let's jump right into this problem. So here's the problem we're going to be doing. A freshly brewed cup of coffee has a temperature 95 degrees in a 20 degree room. When its temperature is 70 degrees, it is cooling at a rate of one degree per minute. When does this occur? So all these Newton law of cooling problems are usually going to start out the same way in that what we can do right off the bat generally is plug in our surrounding temperature into this equation for TS. So, you know, real quick before we do that, just to kind of break down what this equation is saying, is we know that the rate of change of the temperature with respect to time, so big T is temperature, little t is time, uh, is going to be e equal to this uh, equation here, right? So K is some unknown constant we're going to have to solve for. Big T, again, is temperature of the object, so in this case the temperature of the cup of coffee, and then TS is the temperature of the surroundings of the object. So we know that this cup of coffee is sitting in a 20 degree room. So what that tells us is this TS is 20, right? We can just basically put that in right off the bat. That's pretty straightforward. So this is actually an interesting problem because it's, it, it's a little bit different than most of these Newton's law of cooling problems are. Um, I have done a few other of those if you wanna check those out, which are maybe a little bit more standard of what you might run into. You can just click up there at the top of the screen. But the reason I say this problem is a little bit different than what you usually run into is it doesn't tell us the temperature of the coffee at some later time, right? It tells us that the temperature of the coffee is 95 degrees when it's first brewed, right? When T is zero, but it doesn't tell us the temperature at some later time. It's asking us to figure out when the temperature is 70, but it doesn't tell us when it is something. What it tells us instead is the rate that it's cooling at 70 degrees, right? It's, it's temperature is gonna be decreasing one degree per minute when the temperature is 70 degrees. So actually, what we can do is use this differential equation to solve for K, rather than the typical process of coming up with an equation for the temperature or you know some other variable that we kind of relate to the temperature and then solving for k that way. We can actually do it with this differential equation because we know the rate of change of the temperature, dt dt, is one degree per minute, right? At this specific moment in time when it's 70 degrees, we know that this whole thing over here is gonna be negative one. The temperature is decreasing by one degree per minute. And since this is temperature, this is time, this is exactly what they're saying with you know, how fast it's cooling. Then this K is what we're trying to solve for here. And then we know at this moment, at this moment when the rate of change of the temperature is negative one degree, the temperature itself is 70 degrees, right? So if we plug in 70 there, now we have this equation that K is the only unknown thing. So we can actually solve for K right off the bat. It's pretty cool. So 70 minus 20 is 50. So if we divide both sides by 50, that'll cancel that. That'll go over there. So we have K equals negative one over 50. So now what we can do is go back to this differential equation and follow the same kind of process that we normally do with these types of problems. Because what we want to do is come up with an equation that tells us the temperature at some given time so that we can figure out how much time has to pass for it to get to 70 degrees. But the cool thing is we already know this constant K. So what we can do actually is introduce a new variable. We'll say this new variable is gonna be called y and you just wanna make it whatever this is in the parentheses here. So in this case, t minus 20. And the reason why we can do this is now this tells us a new initial value problem that we can create, which has a, a pretty straightforward solution because making this change of variable allows us to say instead of dt dt, we'll have dy dt 
and we know that that's going to be equal to this this constant k, which we've actually already solved for. We already know the constant k is negative one over fifty times our new variable y. And then what we also need to figure out is our initial condition, our initial y value. When zero time is passed, right when the coffee is brewed, what is the value of y? Well, if we know that the copy, coffee, sorry, <laughs> not copy, if we know that the coffee is 95 degrees when t is zero, when time is zero, we can figure out what y is at that time by just plugging 95 in for our temperature here. So 95 minus 20 would be 75. So our initial y value of this new equation is 75. So now, based on this initial value problem, we actually know, based on another formula that's on my integral calculus cheat sheet, that the solution to this initial value problem is y of t equals our initial y value, so 75, times e to the kt, while k is negative 150, so e to the negative 150 times t. So now what we want to do, like I said, we're trying to come up with an equation that tells us the temperature at some given time. So we actually want to go back now from y back to our temperature. And the reason we can do this so soon is because we already solved for k. Typically with these uh, Newton's law of cooling problems, you have to kind of get it into this form. You would still have an unknown constant k here and use this to solve for k. But in this case, like I said, this one's a little different. We already know our k. So we can actually go straight from this point back to our equation for temperature of the coffee. So remember, y is just the temperature minus 20. Well, conversely, what that tells us is the temperature is just y plus 20. So if we add 20 to whatever our y value is at some given time, that should give us the temperature at that given time, right? So the temperature however many minutes, t minutes after it was brewed, is just gonna be 20 plus this equation that we had for the y value at that same time. So this is our equation that tells us the temperature of our coffee at some time, t, t minutes after it was brewed. Well, remember what we're trying to find is how long it took for the temperature to get to 70 degrees. So if the temperature is 70 degrees, we can just plug in 70 for our temperature and solve for time. So to do that, we just want to get our little t all by itself. We would subtract 20 from both sides and then divide both sides by 75. So doing that is going to give us 70 minus 20 is 50. 50 divided by 75 is 2 thirds. And then we're going to have e to the negative 150 1 over 50 t. Then we would take the natural log of both sides to cancel the t. So that tells us the natural log of 2 thirds equals negative 1 over 50 t. And then we can multiply both sides by negative 50 to cancel that, telling us that it will take approximately 20.273 minutes for our coffee to get to 70 degrees. So if you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button as well. Join the Jake's Math Lessons community. Keep coming back for more videos because together I guarantee you we'll be able to help get your grades up in calc and keep crushing it all term together. Thanks and see you next time.